Welcome to the Weather Insights Podcast. I'm meteorologist Scott Pitney, along with meteorologist Jeff Lindner. We are recording on Thursday, June 20th, and Alberto has officially made landfall. It is now a tropical depression, so we have our first name storm of the season in the books. And Jeff, left lessons learned or reminders or whatever, however you want to refer to it, for me anyway, um, are, are the, uh, well, a couple things come to mind. One, how large a tropical storm can get. We haven't seen a tropical storm this large um, in, in 20 years. And as it was well advertised that Winfield got out there, you know, over 400 miles. And we, we had the uh, tides that we were showing there, um, you know, in Galveston and, and San Luis, just uh, way up there, the long wind fetches and the constant pounding and, and all that uh, was uh, pretty amazing to see. So that's one takeaway. The other is just how much the rainfall models shifted throughout this whole this whole event, you know, we saw very heavy rainfall totals showing up early in the week around Louisiana and the upper Texas coast. And then as the, as Alberto, and I don't know if there's a correlation, you know, but we've said from time to time that, that we feel like the models are, are more accurate, give us better information as these storms tighten up and eventually form a center of circulation. I don't know if that had anything to do with this event, but we certainly saw that the, the rainfall model shifting closer to the center and then the observations playing out uh, fairly accurately, at least with the last you know day or so of, mo of model runs. And, uh, you know, we, we got some very hefty rainfall amounts there in South Texas, which is well needed. Uh, Central Texas, the hill country where they need a lot was a little disappointing. Um, what are your takeaways from Alberto, Jeff? You know, it, it was an interesting system. I, I think the the biggest challenge we had, and we tend to have these with these Central American gyro systems, is uh, you get this big trough and gyro that comes off of Central America. And, you know, if you, if you look at this thing, it was really large, really massive, almost not even really tropical. Um, by definition, in the Western Gulf of Mexico. And then it, it finally tightened up down there in the Bay of Campeche. We talked about that last night, how they can tighten up in those areas and moved into Mexico and, and, and finally became a tropical storm. But, um, you know, it's interesting. The, the global models uh, really had a lot of rain spread out, especially up north on the central Gulf Coast and then into the northwestern Gulf Coast and, and uh, then down further to the south. And that's kind of what we got, you know. Um, we definitely didn't see the heavy rains in coastal Louisiana or Beaumont, Port Arthur, like we were thinking. But we certainly did get the heavy rains down here in the Corpus Christi, uh, just north of Corpus Christi, anywhere from 8 to 10 to 12 inches of rain, Aransas County and Refugio County and St. Patricio County. Um, and really what's probably the, the thing that's going on today is back down here in northern Mexico, uh, where we've seen over a foot of rain in the mountains um, back here over, uh, down around Monterey. And so there's likely some very significant uh, flash flooding and, and mudslides occurring here uh, in northeastern Mexico. And that was always a concern and will continue to be a concern uh, as we as Alberto moves further inland over Mexico. <clears throat> and then as the potential second system, which we'll talk about, uh, that comes up out of the southern Gulf potentially takes a very similar track and, and yeah. adds additional mm -hmm. rainfall here into the mountainous areas of northeast Mexico. That's always that's always a uh, a, a concern with these systems, not only in Mexico but even down here in Central America, where they've had some fatalities with this whole mess over the last uh, week and a half or so. Yeah, yeah. So we have the. Uh... The next system, National Hurricane Center, now giving it a 50% chance of development. Uh, that's changed pretty much every day. The The odds of development have increased 50% over the next seven days, 20% over the next 48 hours. And so we have uh, two out there. We have one in the Atlantic taking aim at the southeastern United States, that one with a 40% chance of development. So very similar chances of development. Now the question is, which one be, will become, is it Burl? Sure. Sounds good to me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Which one are you taking to become uh, the next one? 
<laughs> boy, if I if I if I had a hundred dollars for every time I tried to predict what the National Hurricane Center was going to do, um, I think this one here, and we'll talk about this here in a little bit. I think this one here off the southeast coast may give it a run. Um, I certainly think the thing in the in the southwestern Gulf is going to get a name, it, but it won't be until uh, you know Saturday or Sunday or, or maybe even Monday. It's going to be kind of slow. So, but we'll take a look at this thing here off the the southeast coast. It uh, it might. It, it's probably going to be pretty close to being able to to potentially get a name. Yeah, and uh, with the uh, one in the Gulf. Uh, at least the latest discussions from National Hurricane Center, they're, they're not expecting the the kind of wind field that um, Alberto had. But, you know, then again, Alberto was kind of a, an anomaly. We haven't seen anything like that in 20 years. Yeah, and you can clearly see uh, here on the visible satellite image, um, Alberto moving inland over Mexico, I mean, taking up practically the entire country. So Still huge, so yeah. yeah. Very large, very large storm. Yep. It's moisture field getting all back up here into West Texas and everywhere. Uh, this is what we're calling 92L. This is the system off the coast of Florida. And this is kind of, you know, from Alberto back across the southern Gulf of Mexico, back into the Western Caribbean. We still have this, this big trough axis, this monsoonal trough axis laying here. And once again, we're starting to see the thunderstorms and maybe even a little bit of a tropical wave enhancement coming in from the Caribbean yep. uh, into this area. It's being enhanced by this big upper low. I'm going to go over to the water vapor real quick and it'll give it a little bit better. You can see this spin here. This is not at the surface. So this is not a surface low or a tropical system. This is way up around 20, 30,000 feet. Uh, we have low pressure spinning and you can see it's producing shear here across the Western Caribbean right now. Um, it's also producing shear over our system here north of the Bahamas. And so this is upper level lows are not what you want to see if you want tropical development um, versus what you had over Alberta, which was a, a big upper level high. So the air, you can see the air was spinning out from it. Um, this, this upper low is going to move west into northern Mexico, and that is going to create increasingly favorable conditions then across the southern Gulf for this this little area down here to move into this area and become favorable for development. So we'll we'll see. This is going to take time, though. You got a lot of land interaction. It's it's another one of these broad, uh, low pressure systems. And so it's it's not something that's going to develop quickly. Um, I, I would expect it's going to take probably most of the weekend down here before we get anything. And um, then kind of zoom in a little bit on, on the, the system here off the U.S. East Coast. So this is, there is a surface circulation. You know, the question is, is it closed off? And, and what I mean by that, is there a west wind here on the south side of it? Uh, the uh, Air Force Reconnaissance Aircraft are heading out there to give it a look. I mean, there is a decent thunderstorm, maybe one on the north side of it here. Yeah. And it's it's fighting some dry air coming in on the south side. So, you know, there's some things going against this, but it it's probably getting close uh, to potentially being maybe a tropical depression. And it's going to head on up over the next 24 to 36 hours in the direction of generally north central uh, Florida, northeast Florida, maybe the Georgia coast. But, you know, the first thing you can just tell the size difference. I mean, between Alberto and this, Huge this is difference. much, much smaller. Yeah. Um, and and really not the envelope of moisture. If anything, it's kind of sitting in a pocket of dry air. So just, yeah, very, uh, very broken clouds right there. Like you said, just that one lone uh, area of convection, maybe a couple. There's one off to the uh, west a little bit, too, but uh, not too impressive at this point. No. And, you know, the main impacts with this are going to be. Again, we got that high pressure up here over the northeast United States with the big heat. And yeah. so the the. The, the main impacts are, again, going to be gusty, squally winds here along the southeast U.S. coast, the northern Florida coast, northeast Florida coast, and, and, and maybe a little bit of tide uh, in this area. Again, kind of like our area, this is a concave-shaped part of the coast, and so you're pushing easterly winds and you're pushing water at the coast. So you could get some elevated tides here, um, South Carolina, Georgia, maybe extreme northeast Florida. It's pretty rare. Um, to get a landfalling tropical system in, in Georgia and North Florida, it happens, um, but it doesn't happen uh, very often. Um, and it tends to be systems like this, something that's uh, trying to develop, maybe not necessarily purely tropical, uh, that comes up off of some old front or something and comes in here. But to get a hurricane that comes out of the Atlantic to turn west 
and into this area was very rare. So the Jacksonville area hasn't seen a big hurricane hit in a long time. So we'll see what happens to this. It, I don't think it's going to take a lot to get it to get it to, to be a named system. So we'll see what the, the Hurricane Center decides to do here with it uh, later today or tomorrow. Yeah. And then the other thing is is looking, I don't know why this didn't hold, but looking uh, <laughs> forward, um, kind of what potentially could happen in the Gulf of Mexico, kind of what we've been talking about. So this is the some of the ensembles. Uh, you can see a clustering down here. So again, our, our weak trough or possibly weak surface low that's down here off the coast of Belize meanders up into the southern Gulf, the southwestern Gulf. And this is Saturday morning around sunrise. And you can see there's a clustering of, of ensembles here that suggest development. Again, uh, very far to the south. We don't have the big pressure gradients along the Texas coast uh, like we did. You can see this high pressure here ranging all the way back into northeastern Mexico. And so right. uh, a flatter gradient. Um, so we're not anticipating the big wind field with this. Uh, let's see what the European is saying on the, the modeling again for Saturday morning. So we, we actually have decent agreement. Not surprised we're having 50, 60 percent chances of development. They'll probably go up. We probably will see something form down here. And then again, with high pressure building into the north, there's really not a lot of option. But for this to go west, northwest or or maybe northwest in here to uh, the area between Tampico and, say, the border, and so, um, again, very similar to uh, track to what Alberto has done, but impacts on the Texas coast probably fairly different. So we're not anticipating big tidal issues like we just had or still having today, um, not anticipating big wind field issues. Um, could we get some moisture? Absolutely, especially South Texas, coastal Bend area. You could get some moisture coming in from this, maybe even trying to work its way up into Southeast Texas as we get into early next week. Um, but overall, the high pressure kind of suppressing this a little bit further to the south um, than what we saw with Alberto. So we are going to continue to have some elevated tide. I just want to be clear about that. I've had a lot of questions. People go on the beach this weekend. What's it going to look like down there? We will have tides that are high just because of the fact we're still trying to bring down the seas from last week or from this week. And um, also we're gonna continue with somewhat of a pressure gradient. So even though it's not as strong, we will still have 15 to 20 mile an hour winds at times, and that will keep the tides a little bit elevated, but they're nowhere, they're not gonna be anywhere near what we just went through. So we're talking your normal nuisance coastal flooding type stuff at times of high tide, right on the beaches, maybe a little bit of overwash, but nothing to the level uh, we've experienced over the past 48 hours or so, which was some pretty significant and um, widespread coastal impacts, uh, not only the upper Texas coast, but down on the mid Texas coast around the Rockport area, Port Aransas and Corpus Christi, there was some fairly significant coastal flooding uh, down in those areas also. So uh, that's the good news. Of course, we're dealing with the tropics. We saw last week how, how many times things changed. So my suggestion to everybody is while it's looking pretty good for the weekend and into early next week, it's probably also a good idea to check with the forecast at least daily uh, this time of year. And especially when there's the potential for something to be in the Gulf of Mexico. Yeah. And just real quick, Jeff, I, I haven't read the storm reports. I just uh, kind of from some, uh, uh, other uh, sources, but we maybe had a spin up or two uh, around the Rockport area, brief tornado, some damage down there, possibly. Did you get a chance to look at any of that yet or is any, is any of that confirmed? I don't know if the weather service has gone out on the Rockport um, yeah. damage. There was some damage down. I believe it was just west of Rockport. Um, we also had some damage in Belleville um, that was reported. Uh, wow. The Weather Service uh, was taking a look at that. They think uh, possibly, actually, there was some video of the tornado around the Belleville area. So, uh, you know, no, no big surprise. This is what happens when we get into these feeder bands like this. Um, you get these spin ups, they're relatively brief, they're relatively weak. Um, but they can blow down tree limbs and, and tear up some roofs and blow down fences and stuff like that. And so um, they're also can be difficult to warn on sometimes. Um, they, they tend to be very transient. So, you know, a couple of radar scans, they'll be there showing up and then they'll they'll go away in the in the next scan or so. And so they these these little weak tropical tornadoes don't tend to last very long. 
Um, and uh, but but they can occasionally cause some damage. I think there was some additional tornado activity, especially last night, uh, back down in South Texas, like further west of Corpus and in those areas. Um, and we had a little bit of an enhancement of the wind field last night down in that area that that just with some of those feeder bands helped to produce some of these tornadoes. Yeah, definitely a justified tornado watch that they put out there. Uh, right before all that started. But uh, as you said, just another reminder that these even tropical, it doesn't have to be a hurricane, even tropical storms can produce tornadoes. Jeff, thank you very much. Thank you everybody for watching. Just a reminder to click or subscribe or click on and subscribe to our Weather Insights YouTube channel. Be sure to, sh to uh, share with friends and family. Stay in touch with the latest on the tropics and join us for the next Weather Insights podcast.